Hi. Have you heard people talking about map projection codes like EPSG3857 and 4326? What's the difference between them? When should I use them? Let's find out. I'm Tom from MapTiler and we're here to help you build great maps. This is the fourth video in our Web Mapping Basics series. If you like the series, please click subscribe. If something's not clear, let me know in the comments section below. In this episode, I'll talk about map projections, their codes and other details. The website epsg.io is the best resource for getting this information. We already mentioned in the previous episodes two EPSG codes, 3857 for WebMercator and 4326 for Global Geodetic. There are many more EPSG codes. Just take a look at epsg.io and you'll see the details on a huge number of different projections. So what does this all mean? Well, we know the Earth isn't flat, but our maps are, all thanks to the mathematical process called projection. The most common projection used for web maps is spherical Mercator, which is identified in the map industry by the EPSG code 3857. Think back to the first Web Mapping Basics video. Here, we said that the Mercator maps are great for preserving shapes and directions, but greatly increase country sizes as you get nearer the poles. The second most frequently used projection for world maps is EPSG 4326. This refers to the global geodetic projection, which is commonly used for global textures. However, when viewed on a flat map, this projection greatly deforms the shapes of the countries as you near the poles. This projection is often labelled WGS84, as it uses the latitude and longitude coordinates from this datum. More about datums later in the video. So why isn't there an ideal projection? The real shape of Earth is too complicated to model in a simple mathematical equation because of the Earth's rotation, unequal distribution of continents, sea level changes due to tides, and so on. In order to create a map, Earth is usually simplified into a basic 3D model, like a sphere or an ellipsoid. The regular 3D model allows us to use geographic coordinates, longitude and latitude, as mentioned in the previous video. However, these shapes still can't be perfectly flattened onto paper. Think about trying to flatten out an orange peel. It splits. This is why we project them onto a plane or other 3D shape that we can unroll without splitting, like a cone or a cylinder. Let's focus on the first problem how to fit an ellipsoid to the geoid in the best way. There are several ways to do this, but there will always be places that don't fit perfectly. That's why we have a datum. Datums include information about the shape and size of the Earth, as well as its orientation in space. In other words, which ellipsoid is being used and where the zero meridian, such as the Greenwich meridian, and the zero parallel, like the equator, are. We talked about this in the previous video. The most commonly used global datum is called WGS84. In North America, there's also NAD83, and for Europe, ETRS, which more closely fit these areas. For smaller areas, like single states or cities, we use different ellipsoids that more closely match the surface of the Earth in that particular place. These ellipsoids allow us to have up to millimetre precision in both horizontal and vertical directions. This can make a big difference in the real world. For example, using a global ellipsoid, your house could be classed as being in an area prone to flooding. But using a more precise local ellipsoid, your house could be outside the zone, saving you a lot of money on insurance premiums. The second big problem to solve is choosing the right projection. Projection is the way we flatten the ellipsoid onto a map for our screens. In the process, we have to sacrifice one or more of the following elements to preserve the others. Area, distance and angle. For example, a Mercator map preserves the angles perfectly. It was created to allow sailors to follow compass bearings between ports really precisely. However, the areas and distances are not correct. 
Paying land taxes based on areas from a Mercator map would be very unfair for those living in Greenland. Other projections sacrifice different elements to preserve area, while others make compromises between all three elements. Maps that preserve angles are called conformal, those that preserve areas are called equal area, and for distance, they are called equidistant. You can explore these different projection types at epsg.io. These numerical codes are used across the mapping industry, so that people always know exactly which projection they are using, even across languages and cultures. To sum it up, Earth is an irregular, constantly changing object that we can't easily unroll into a map. Different map users or different parts of the globe require different methods to create the ideal transformation from curved earth to flat map. This is the reason why cartographers have created so many different projections which we now identify by their EPSG codes. Remember, you can also watch the other videos of this series to learn more about web maps. If this video has helped you, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Bye for now.